Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to play with thermoelectric cooler again. So I put together uh, two thermoelectric coolers here uh, on a water cooling block. So what we can see is that uh, we have the water cooling block and then the hot side of the bottom uh, cooler is connected to the block and then the cold side of this is connected to the hot side of the other uh, pad here and then that is uh, on the top and the cold side is exposed to the air so what I will do that uh, I will try to reach very low temperatures on this part of the of the cooler and uh, what we have here is basically uh, on the top we have this uh, TEC uh, 12706 so basically 12 volts and uh, 6 amperes so roughly 72 watts of uh, power consumption and uh, uh, the cooling power is around the same so it's like 60 watts if I remember correctly and then under it uh, I put a different uh, thermoelectric cooler so in the middle we have TEC 12 uh, 715 so the middle uh, unit is running on 15 amperes so it has more higher power output and the reason why I did like this because I want to cool this part as much as possible so I wanted to use something which is capable of uh, transferring or yeah which is capable of transferring more heat so I did like this and I glued them together with some thermal grease and uh, what we have so this is on the bottom so it's a simple aluminium block with two uh, connections to the water cooling so I will use my water cooler from my previous projects and then yeah two of these things they are sealed with silicon so the water will not kill them or the uh, humidity which will be accumulating on the surface uh, due to the humidity of the air and then I also printed this part here it's uh, for for the thermoelectric cooler so there are two like rails here and uh, it fits the cooler perfectly so it's quite stable and uh, why I want this because uh, I can clamp down uh, this uh, cooler against a surface and then I will have this uh, 3 by 3 uh, centimeters uh, exposed area so and then you can see that the plastic is only touching the the upper part so the cold part of this so there will be hopefully very small heat leakage and I can keep this as cool as possible but of course I increase the surface a little bit by uh, having this plastic attached to the surface of this uh, thermoelectric cooler but I really hope that uh, this will not introduce too much losses so what I will have that I have a block like this it's uh, some polystyrene uh, block and uh, we will put this in like this so we get rid of most of the heat leakage and everything and then I put this on the surface and uh, use some screws and just screw on the top of it so at the end we will have just this uh, 3 by 3 centimeters exposed surface and we will see how low we can go with the with the temperature so this is basically the project uh, there is a small problem that uh, the glue is not cured yet or I don't know and uh, the upper part is a bit moving but that's uh, that's why we will use this printed part and uh, clamp everything down so it will make the wall uh, structure fixed and then I have two thermometers 
I will use this infrared or I will use this uh, K-type uh, thermocouple uh, thermometer to, to measure the temperature and I will use, as I said, water cooling for, he, uh, for this uh, part. So what I will do now is uh, I will assemble everything with the water cooling and uh, I will connect uh, the uh, thermoelectric elements to my power supply. You can see that in another video as well. And uh, I will try to see what kind of temperatures I can reach. First of all, I will just uh, power the bottom part of this uh, thermoelectric cooler and I, I, I will see how much uh, cooling I can achieve. But with that, I will cool down this wall uh, stuff here. And then after I uh, made that, let's say, experiment, I will increase the power on this uh, element as well. And uh, we will try to reach very low temperatures. I haven't yet tried this system, but I expect uh, something around minus 30 or even lower temperatures. We will see. So now I will assemble everything and then I will return to you. So as you can hear, the pump is running and also the power supply is running. So we are feeding some power to the thermoelectric coolers. And uh, as you can see that uh, the temperature of the water is like 28 degrees Celsius almost and then I will just use this uh, thermocouple to measure different temperatures this is just uh, the side of the thermocouple uh, thermoelectric element here and uh, we have the power supply at this corner so this is now running for like three five minutes there is already some ice accumulating on the surface I put this polystyrene uh, piece just to uh, hinder the heat loss on that uh, part of the uh, cooler but we have a lot of heat loss at this edge here because it's exposed to the air and uh, the details that we should know now is that the bottom cooler is running at 8 volts and 14.2 amperes so it's roughly 114 watts of power and the top part is running at 4.9 amperes and 7 volts so roughly 34 watts of power so if I measure the temperature uh, on the surface it's uh, somewhere around 36 minus 36 degrees so now what I will try that uh, I change the power a little bit so decrease the current so I can uh, decrease the effect of the joule heating and I will try to do that by dropping the The current here and as you can see that this thermometer is immediately going down in temperature because now it's the hot side of the top uh, cooler is uh, is less hot so it's like 36 degrees Celsius I try to remove the ice but I need some glo gloves because it's quite cold so this is the ice formed on the top all these white particles is just the moisture of the air thirty nine it's not so bad
So, minus 40. Minus 40.8. Minus 41. So it's quite cold. And now what I do is that the bottom is still 14.2, 14.1 amperes and 8 volts. So that is unchanged. And the top unit is 4.2. 6 amperes and 6.6 6 .6 volts so I decrease the, the power a little bit and then uh, the joule heating is less therefore we can have a bit better efficiency so yeah minus 40 and as I said the the cooler is not so isolated especially on this side where we have the uh, water cooling so here if I could cover this part uh, better using some cloth or something then I think that uh, the temperature of the exposed surface could go down uh, further by a few degrees But I think uh, minus, four, minus 40 is quite uh, satisfying. So now I increased the power to 5 amperes and uh, 7.2 watts. And you can see that the temperature is increasing here, which is the side of the top uh, uh, Peltier element. And now we started to lose some uh, cooling effect due to the Joule heating. So it's uh, difficult to find the sweet spot of the of the cooling uh, device. Actually, you can do it by uh, measuring the temperature at uh, each settings so for example you start at uh, one amperes and then you increase it gradually and you in, uh, check the temperature after a certain waiting time to get it uh, reach the equilibrium temperature and then you can define a minimum uh, temperature which can be reached so that will be your maximum current that you can run through this device. I explained this in another video, you, so you should check that if you are interested in that area. So as you can see that if I increase the current uh, on the top, then I lose some uh, performance. And there are some air bubbles around the thermometer of the water so this is not always precise but it's more or less close to the reality so I decrease the current again and you see that the uh, temperature is minus 3.5 degrees uh, at the side It seems like that we we are losing some efficiency. So I just change the current again and uh, I remove some ice from this surface here. So yeah, we reached uh, this temperature. If you can keep your water cool enough, 
so like 25 degrees then you can reach minus 40 with this system easily and you can ev even uh, reach colder temperatures on the surface here if you can uh, cover these exposed areas better and uh, you can decrease the heat loss towards the yeah the environment but uh, what i suggest you is to measure the uh, maximum current for your each devices so the maximum current here is the current which can be reached without uh, basically overpowering the Peltier effect by the Joule effect so the heating effect of the of the current So here we have minus 35, but uh, yeah, when the water was a bit colder and uh, I had another setting for the current, then I was able to reach a bit better uh, temperature on the surface. But I would say minus 35, minus 36 is also quite okay. Minus 37. So it depends on yeah so I think this was the demonstration so far uh, I will try to make this uh, a bit more uh, solid and also a bit more covered I will come up with some idea which can be used to cover this part as well and I will try to check if I can go lower with the temperature, but I don't think that I can uh, do too much more and go even lower. So, so I think I will end the video here. So what I wanted to uh, demonstrate basically that we can use this kind of uh, stacked uh, cooler to reach even lower temperatures that uh, which can be reached by using only one unit so if we stack two units on each other then we can go lower and uh, we can do some fun stuff because you can put some liquids on the surface and uh, see how they froze freeze also you can just wait and uh, see the humidity of the air is getting uh, frozen on the surface of this uh, area so you can see this or some other stuff but uh, you cannot really use it to uh, cool down your apartment or something like this so it's a very inefficient inefficient uh, uh, device for these kind of purposes but if you have some kind of detector or some kind of uh, semiconductor based uh, devices then you can use the uh, this kind of cooler to keep it cool so I hope that uh, it was useful and uh, helpful in some way and I hope you learned something so see you in the next video